All right, so real quick, we are going to go back in time. And we are going to make sure that we remember how to find the derivative of sine inverse of 4x squared. So, do you guys remember when we were, we're going to give instructions, find the derivative? Okay, so you do the sine to the other side, so sine y equals 4x squared derivative of sine is equals so dy dx equals 8x over cos y and we're done? No. What do we do next? Yeah, so we go back to this part right here and that helps us make the triangle. So angle Y sine is Sokotoa I, opposite over hypotenuse, sorry. So I can't believe you were not thinking exactly what my brain was thinking at the time. <laughs> All right, so this side, I'll call this side B, or side A, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say what? X squared. Oh, did you call this A? Yeah. Okay, sorry. B squared. I paused for so long, trying. I was like, where is A? And then I... you could also call it A. All right, so B squared equals one squared minus one squared squared, and B equals square root of one. That's a really good six. Yeah. Okay. So this side. That's a 16. <laughs> I wrote the six without looking, and you can tell. All right. So I've got that. So no, we're not doing that anymore. Mm -mm. No, no. <laughs> Okay, so cos y would be so adjacent over hypotenuse, and since it's over 1, I can ignore that, so I'm going to say dy dx equals Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at our yellow sheets. We're going to do the exact same problem again. Yep. All right. So if we look at our yellow sheet, the front page. I'm well. So the reason anyone remember the reason we didn't do the shortcuts in the first place? They were hard to remember. That was the only reason. Yeah. So. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the same problem with the shortcut. Now, I would say um, finding the derivative of a trig inverse function happens, but not all the time. What we're learning today is integrating something that would get you back to that inverse trig function. Again, happens, but not all the time. Okay, so the reason that we did these doing tri using triangles is because I I felt like it was more memorable. It's something that you could reason your way through as opposed to a shortcut you would just plain forget and then not be able to reason your way through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So if we do the same problem using the shortcut, the shortcut says the derivative of a sine is 1 over 
one, square root of 1 minus um, x squared, and then the x is this. So if we have something else in the angle here, then we would plug that in for x. And then we know that we always do the chain rule, so we'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay. So if we were doing this problem using our yellow sheet, we would say y prime equals 1 over square root of 1 minus, and then in parentheses, we would plug in what was written as the angle which is the, or what was written as the ratio, I guess, which is 4x squared, okay? And then we'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 8x, okay. Yes, this is way easier than what we did. However, you guys just now already remembered the triangle stuff way better than my students ever have teaching them the shortcut. Okay, so I will say that even though that took us hardly any time and much less work, I would argue most students would probably not have remembered that today. Okay. So on the, um, on the short side, why is it kind of... Oh, fourth squared squared, I missed that. Yeah. Uh, so on, on the short side, why is it that I must multiply? That's something the yellow sheet doesn't write because it gets you, it gets complicated to write it as a shortcut. But yes, it, so so the the, the yellow sheet has the no it do it'd be x prime because dx is yeah um the the yellow sheet is saying without the chain rule this is a shortcut and so then you in your head you say anytime I have a derivative of the inside yeah yeah absolutely okay so what you learned in the video last night was the backwards version of this does that make sense okay so let's flip over. Let's flip over our yellow sheet, and now we're going to zoom in on this part. Everybody fix number 16 so it's got that minus in there. Already done. Everyone fix that? Okay. He's already fixed. <laughs> then, then, then we can print out the new one. Yeah. I'm going to do... Okay, there's the assignment. Okay, so you guys have to do one, so we're going to do two. I was going to say we could do eight. Why do eight? Because it's like in the middle of it, so it's not going to be like a super easy one. That's fair. We can do number eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
it would have been on the top. Okay, so what I have is that dx equals one half v nu. And I'm going to go ahead and mark down all the things that I have. I've got u. This is really one half v nu. Okay, so if I rewrite the problem out, I'm going to have a one half in the front. And then I've got du over square root of 1 minus u squared. And now I'm going to look at my yellow sheet. And so what should I be writing? 1 half sine inverse. Mm -hmm. Sine inverse. Sine inverse, Stevens. Sine inverse. Right. So, so u over 1, right? plus C, and why do I have a 1 on the bottom? Because it's your A. Yeah, because A in this case would be 1 squared. Technically, if you want to write this as 1 squared minus something squared, you could, just to have good notes. Okay. So this is 1 half sine inverse of 2x plus C. Okay. How did we feel about that one? Decent. Decent. That was pretty good. All right. We're going to try number. Do you want to do eight? Let's do number eight. Unless you want to do the I, but I don't think you're going to do that. We have 1 over, oh, I didn't leave room for my x, x, and then x to the 4th minus 4 dx, and I'm going to rewrite this. Yeah, you can move the dx to the top. I'm going to have something squared minus something squared. Okay, so x squared squared minus 2 squared. Yeah, we got a little bit of a dilemma here because that u, what would the u be? How did you find x squared into yeah. x squared squared and then equals x to the fourth? Nope, nope, x to the fourth. X to the fourth. X to the fourth. X to the fourth. Okay. Um x to the x. Oh no, I know what happened. I know exactly. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so this is a good one to do then. Okay, so what's the derivative? of u. 2x. 2x dx. Okay. Before we go much further, let's look back at the yellow sheet. Which one is it? 18. It's 18. 18. Okay. Now here's what I want you to notice is that in 18 it says u first and then whatever that u is squared second. Um, so u first and then whatever that u is squared second. We don't have that, do we? Okay, so what must have been in the problem to start with? Yeah, this must have been an x squared on the bottom, and there must have been an x on the top. Does that make sense? So let's look back at the yellow sheet. We have the u right here on the bottom. I wish it would highlight that. Okay, so we have the u in the front of the square root on the bottom. And then we have the u squared right underneath the radical, right? So if we look here, then whatever this was, this was u squared squared. So it, we should have had the u squared right here, Does that make, or x squared right here, okay? So what I did is I put an x back on the bottom and the top. I unsimplified the problem. Does that make sense? Okay, are we comfortable with that? I'm not comfortable with it. But you see where it came from? Okay. So what we did is we, we looked at the one on the yellow sheet. We knew it had to be, and we made it match. We made it kind of work, okay? We didn't do any illegal math things because you're allowed to multiply by one 
and multiplying by x over x is like multiplying by 1. Okay? Yes? Are we going to have to memorize all of these, or are they like D? You would have to memorize these. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we don't have a 2, though, so we do need to divide by 2. Okay. So here is our U for U squared. There's our U as part of the formula. And then and it was X dx. X dx is one half. Okay, so what we have here is the one half in the front. U squared, well, U, just U, yep, just U, and then U squared minus two squared. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we compare this back to number 18 again, what are we going to write? One. So we're going to start with one half because we have that, that coefficient in the front. Okay, and then we're going to have, and then we're going to have a one over two. So we have the one half in the front because of this. So this one half has to go in the front because of this, right? But then we also have another one over two in the front because of the two squared. Does that make sense? Okay, then we have secant inverse. And then what do we have? X squared okay. Over two. All right. Plus C. Okay. So we've got one fourth. Oh, you wrote X squared already. It should have been it should have been U, right? To start with. <laughs> You're good. You're good. So U over two, and then if we fix it, then we plug the X squared in. Okay. Okay, we're going to do another one. I'm not going to tell you what number it is yet because I'm making us start it off harder than it starts in the problem. Okay, so I'll tell you what number it is in a second. So on the top, and don't look, flip your papers over. Stop looking at the notes. Or stop looking at the book page. Don't look at the book page. All right, we're going to have x minus 2 over x squared plus 2x plus 5. The x, yeah. Okay. Except, so think about what the bottoms of these look like. We don't want to factor this. We're going to complete the square. Okay, so I'm just, I'm going to ignore the problem for right now. I'm going to think of x squared plus 2x plus 5. And I'm going to remember back to um, math 2, I believe, is when you learn how to do this. It's when you learn how to take a parabola and put it in vertex form. Because a parabola in vertex form has parentheses something squared and then plus or minus a number. And that's going to fit the notation that we're using right here. Okay, so I'm going to write x squared plus 2x. I'm going to leave a space. This is going to be me completing the square. And then I'm going to put the plus 5 right here. So what do I do with the 2 to start the process of completing the square? No? Divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So the number that completes the square is a plus 1. Now, I can't just add 1 to an expression and expect it to equal the same thing, right? So if I add 1 to the expression, I also have to minus 1 from the expression. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so then I have got something squared plus something. So I've got plus 4. What's the something squared? X plus 1. So if you were to factor this, you'd be looking for two things that multiply to 1 but add to 2, which would be 1 and 1. So X plus 1 squared. Okay, so let's go back up here to the problem. 
So this is x minus 2 over x plus 1 squared plus 4. Dx. Are we allowed to see what number the problem is on the sheet? Yeah, you can look at it. It's number 20. All right, so what is your U? U is And actually, instead of writing plus 4, what should I probably be writing instead? Plus 2 squared. Plus 2 squared, okay. Okay. Derivative of u is 1 dx. Okay. So if we compare it to the yellow sheet, what do we have? 16, 17, or 18? It's 17. It's definitely tangent. Okay. So let's think about this. We have the bottom of it is definitely tangent. We found our u, we found our du, but we've got some extra stuff on top. So what should we do with that extra stuff on top? Make it, do that thing where you make like the u. Okay. So if u equals x plus 1, then I can minus 1, and I get x equals u minus 1. And so we have this is u, dx is du. The x is u minus 1, and then we have another minus 2, so u minus 3. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to split this into two different integrals because we don't have something that's going to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of a mean one. Hang on for one second. I'm going to look up the answer real quick and make sure what I'm doing. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and pretend that this was the original problem that we're doing. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to split it into two. I'm going to say u over u squared plus 2 squared du plus, not plus, minus. Yeah, you can do either. Could like clarity say? Why would you even say that? Okay. And the right side is pretty easy. We're going to do the right side first. So if you look at the right side, what do you see? And actually, if you want, if we want this to be a one on top, because if you look at the yellow sheet, if you look at the yellow sheet, all of these have a one on top, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that coefficient, I'm going to take that 3 and I'm going to make it a coefficient and just move it to the front. Not 1 third because it's on the top, 3 over 1. Yeah. Okay, so when I write this out, I'm going to say I've got negative 3, and then what does the yellow sheet tell me to do? Okay, so it's 1 over A. It's 1 over A, tan inverse U over A. So it's times 1 over 2, tan inverse, u over 2, okay? And then what do we replace the u with? Okay. Does that make sense? Uh -uh. Okay, the part that's kind of weird is now this one, we are doing... We're going to have answers that are Okay, so if you look at this one, pretend that it wasn't you, pretend that it was a different variable. So what do you guys notice about this? Okay, 
Yeah, we yeah, can't cancel yeah. anything. It would kill something. It would kill a puppy. <laughs> pretend, pretend we were doing this problem. Pretend we were doing this problem yesterday. You can only split the top. You can't split the, split the, split the bottom. Yeah. Nope. You can only put coefficients and like numbers in front. We can't take a variable out. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do U substitution, but we're going to call it V substitution. Are you ready? Are you ready to do this V substitution? Okay. What are we going to call the inside? Not U. We're going to call it V. And But what part of the problem is going to be the inside? The bottom. Okay. So I'm going to say for my V substitution for this one, I'm going to say V is U squared plus Q squared. And DV is... 2u du and we we have the u on the top but we don't have the 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 okay so what i've got right now is i've got the entire bottom is v and i took away the top and the du and i rewrote one half dv Okay, so what I'm integrating now for this part is I've got one half, one over V, DV. Okay, so we have one half times LN, right? Because that's one over V, so we know that from yesterday, LN of absolute value of V plus C, but we take the V out and we replace it with U squared plus, two squared. U squared plus two squared, but we take the U out and we replace it with X plus, X plus one squared plus four. When I chose 20, I did not expect that. Value though, right? Oh yeah, because it's going to be positive no matter what. You can still use them. They're a little bit redundant, but they're not wrong. Whew. You guys, we got that right, and I did not plan that ahead of time, and that worked out way more difficult than I thought. All right. Okay. So let's let's think back through. Now that one was that was a lot to bite off. So let's talk about how we knew the process for this one. Let's just talk through it and make sure that we can like see the big picture. Can you just combine the pluses? Yeah, so one plus a constant and another plus a constant, a constant plus a constant is still a constant, so they kind of go together. You you kind of omit one, yeah. Because plus constant plus constant is still a plus constant. constant. Yeah. Yep. All right. So. All right. So what what did we do? So the first part was we completed the square on the bottom because we wanted it to look like a parabola that was in vertex form. So we compare it to the stuff on the yellow sheet and have something squared plus something squared or something squared minus something squared. And parabolas in vertex form do that. Okay, so that was a little trick. Yes? I'm going to ignore you. So we did that first. We completed the square. We had that. What point? At what point did we realize we were in trouble and this problem was going to get more difficult? Yeah, when we had that X on the top, right? It was right up here. This is when we first noticed something was going to go funky, is when our DU didn't have an X in it, but we still had the X on the top, right? So we have that, and then we had to write the X in terms of U, right? And then the point where we for sure confirmed that things were going funky was when we were left with the U on the top. Okay, what was our strategy here? Split it up. So when we split it, the right side was exactly what we were doing today. That was easy, right? The left side, we had to get out of the mindset of what we did today and think, and we just used regular U substitution, but like what we did yesterday, okay? Yeah, so we did V substitution. Okay, and then when we did like double U substitution, because we haven't done one of those before, what did we have to be careful of before we got down to our final answer? 
It was V. I did V. We could do W subs. Oh, we that's what we should do. No, no, no. Double. You. Uh, so, but that's what we that so we shouldn't have done V. We should have done W. So we can say U substitution and then double U substitution. Next. All right. So we made sure when we were doing this V substitution that we did substitute the U back in, and then we had to remember that the U was from U substitution. We had to substitute back in again. So things got a little like convoluted in there. Okay, got a little, a little hairy. Okay, um, if you'll notice, 20 was actually a little bit past what your assignment goes to. Yours goes to 17, I think, which means I'm pretty sure I didn't assign anything like that. I'm pretty sure I, pretty sure I skipped it. So that's good. Alrighty. So go ahead and get started. If you are getting panicky, let me know and I will help you on some of these. Okay? Sound good? All right.